Welcome, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Dave Shalba, and I served as deacon in the First Presbyterian Church of Bhutan for two terms. I hope you and your families are all well, staying safe, and healthy. We are all experiencing the most unsettling, scary, stressful, and for many, the loneliest times of our lives. The COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, followed by horrible acts of civil disobedience and social unrest, makes me feel like I'm witnessing the prophecy of revelations. The only thing missing so far are the presence of seven spirits, seven churches, seven golden lampstands, and seven stars. Things are so bleak, I'm just waiting for the seventh angel to blow the seventh trumpet to fulfill the mystery of God. Obviously, I'm just kidding. But doesn't it seem like we're experiencing catastrophic events of biblical proportions? And who knows, maybe God is sending the whole world a very loud wake-up call. And there is no escaping the constant barrage of bad news that's just impossible to ignore. The media thrives on publishing and broadcasting society's faults and violence. The media falsely claim to be concerned, yet they aggressively promote the worst of mankind simply to increase ratings. And it's like watching a bad car wreck. You just can't turn away. Our Lord's teaching of tolerance has been replaced by lawbreakers' rationalization to disregard and disrespect one another. And again, the media's continual promotion of this uncivil behavior is all enveloping and consuming every minute of our daily lives. People have different views about the authenticity or actual origins of scripture, but it really doesn't matter what your position or opinion may be. Reading scripture can help comfort you and carry you through the most emotionally challenging times of your life. And these are certainly pretty difficult times of crisis. Worry. This is really a tough emotion to control or conquer. Let's face it. You'd have to have a heart of stone not to be deeply concerned about what's happening. But it's very important to differentiate or distinguish concern from worry. As some of you know, I recite the serenity prayer literally every day, and lately, multiple times a day. While this isn't scripture, they are wonderful, brilliant, life-changing words written by the theological philosopher and Protestant pastor, Reinhold Niebuhr. This is the edited version with my interpretations. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. To worry about things you have absolutely no control over is foolish. And if you think about it, it's actually insulting to God. To be totally consumed with worry is, is putting yourself on the same level as God or thinking you're his equal. It's also admitting you have no faith or trust in God. You adhere to all the COVID-19 protocols of social distancing, wearing a mask, and sanitizing your hands every time you wave to someone. But there is a chance you may still contract this dreaded disease. If you put your faith in God first and receive, of course, the proper medical attention, believe you will get better and you will be healthy once again. The courage to change the things you can. If you truly believe the Holy Spirit is in you, God's hand will guide you and God will give you the courage and strength to do the right things. Our church is filled with people who have had the courage to reach out into our community and connect with those who are less fortunate. There are a lot of people in the world who donate money but would never consider commingling in neighborhoods of those who are less fortunate, purely out of the fear 
that they may be putting themselves into some type of physical danger. The members of our congregation are fearless and courageously serve food, provide clothing, and most importantly, aren't afraid to share their love with our neighbors in need. It's difficult to witness what's happening in our society today, but we can hold our heads high and be proud because we have the courage to be true disciples of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the wisdom to know the difference. Look, it took me over 50 years to understand and, and find the humility to accept I'm not in control. Wisdom begins with being humble and then doing an honest self-assessment. You know, being the CEO and president of many companies over the years, people would give me things like this, the boss coffee mug. And after years of receiving these ego building items, I ended up beginning to believe I could really have control over everything. So it was a very difficult lesson for me to learn. But once I accepted I'm not the boss and discovered how to surrender my worries over to God, I finally began to live with hope and found my inner peace. 1 Peter 5, 7 and Psalm 91, 2 speaks to worries. Give you all your worries to him because he cares about you. And those who go to God most high for safety will be protected by the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, you are my place of safety and protection. You are my God and I trust you. Fear and stress are two more negative and destructive emotions that seamlessly integrate with worry. In fact, worry leads to fear and fear leads to stress. It's a vicious cycle so many people fall into and it's very difficult to break that cycle once it begins. And it seems this emotional roller coaster is always centered around two primary catalysts health and wealth. But remember Psalm 103 3. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. And Philippians 4 19. My God will use his wonderful riches in Christ Jesus to give you everything you need. Now, reciting the serenity prayer can help to bring you peace and hope, but taking the time to embrace scripture that speaks to your current emotions will help to enrich your spiritual journey and provide guidance when you need it most. 2 Timothy 1 7 and Proverbs 3 25 speak to fear. God did not give us a spirit that makes us afraid, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. In Proverbs, you won't be afraid of sudden trouble. You won't fear the ruin that comes to the wicked because the Lord will keep you safe. He will keep you from being trapped. Stress is mentally and physically debilitating. The only antidote I know to effectively combat stress is the ability to develop patience. Patience is something many of us lack, and I was especially impatient when I was younger. With age, I've seemed to become more patient. In Psalms 27:14 and 41, as well as Romans 15:4 through 5, provides words to remember. Wait for the Lord's help. Be strong and brave and wait for the Lord's help. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. In Romans, everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. The scriptures give us patience and encouragement so that we can have hope. Patience and encouragement come from God 
And I pray that God will help you all agree with each other the way Christ Jesus wants. Through Jesus Christ, anything is possible. And the two key attributes we all need to combat negative and destructive emotions are bravery and strength. Psalms 31, 24 and 27, 1 through 3 deliver a profound message to give us hope. All you who put hope in the Lord, be strong and brave. And the Lord is my light and the one who saves me. I fear no one. The Lord protects my life. I am afraid of no one. If an army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. If war breaks out, I will trust the Lord. For all of you that have been isolated or quarantined from your family and friends, you must be feeling lonely. Most of us need human contact, a hug, a kiss, the touch of our loved ones. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we'll be sharing those intimate moments in the very near future. But please, don't despair. Remember, God is our ultimate companion, and He is always there by our side through thick and thin, as stated in Isaiah 41.10 and Psalm 46.1. So don't worry, because I am with you. Don't be afraid, because I am your God. I will make you strong and will help you. I will support you with my right hand that saves you. In Psalm 46.1, God is our protection and our strength. He always helps in times of trouble. God never takes a break. He's on call 24-7 and ready to listen and provide comfort whenever you need. God has become my favorite driving companion. I love talking to him when I'm driving because He's an attentive listener and never tells me how to drive, not like my wife or some of my best friends. I find time passes quickly and I always arrive at my destination well before our conversation is over or my prayers are finished. This time is well spent as stated in 1 John 1.13. Our fellowship is with God the Father and with His Son added with the hopeful words of Matthew 21, 22. If you believe, you will get anything you ask for in prayer. Finally, depression. Who wouldn't feel a little down in the dumps or, or be a bit depressed during these troubling times? But once again, Psalm 34, 17, Isaiah 51, 11, reminds us there is nothing to be depressed about because God is there to support us through it all. The Lord hears good people when they cry out to him, and he saves them from all their trouble. And Isaiah, the people the Lord has freed will return and enter Jerusalem with joy. Their happiness will last forever. They will have joy and gladness, and all sadness and sorrow will be gone forever. We're not physically together but it would be nice to try and spiritually connect by reciting the beautiful, meaningful, and I think really timely Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me down the righteous path for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of darkness, I will fear no evil, for you are always with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Live by the words of Romans 8.14. The true children of God are those who let God's Spirit lead them. And don't allow yourselves to become overwhelmed with negative emotions and trust in Proverbs 16.3. Depend on the Lord in whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. Until we can once again be together, 
Stay safe, healthy, and let the scriptures provide you with peace, hope, and comfort. May God's unwavering love and gracious mercy bless you and keep you and your family safe and healthy. Amen.